Hi, Dr. Paul Hader here. You know we all have a destiny. There is a reason that we're here and we're trying to fulfill that. And when our destiny is fulfilled, then we will go meet our maker and be in that white light, in that bliss. You know, a long time ago, I remember my um, brother, my, my dad was a farmer. <laughs> he was a rice farmer in Sacramento Valley area. And my brother was riding along with him on the caterpillar and there was a big disc behind him. They were dragging and my brother fell off and uh, the disc went right over the top of him. My dad just got off of that tractor and it was beside himself. He was crying and everything. He, he thought that my brother had, had died. There's no doubt about it. There's those big round metal uh, blades come through the ground and they rip up everything, cut up everything. and it's uh, it was amazingly dangerous, and other people have died. But to our amazement, the ground was so soft that it just pushed my brother down, and uh, didn't touch him really. And so, lo and behold, he's still alive now. There is a destiny. And we had another. <laughs> incident with an old disc also. <laughs> Being in a family with uh, farmers, you know, I mean, uh, farm equipment is one thing that people die from. <laughs> but we had this old disc that was stuck in the ground uh, at our uh, little acreage that we had. And my dad was hooked up the John Deere tractor to it. And it was, here's the, the disc this way, you know, sideways. And here's the tractor kind of at, at an angle. And he's pulling at it, pulling at it, pulling at it, and all of a sudden it flips over. And I'm standing back here, and a little voice came to me. I didn't even see what was going on. A little voice came to me and said, step back, Paul. And I took one step back, and I felt the blade, the wind of the blade come down right in front of me, like that. And my dad got off the track. <laughs> <laughs> and he again was beside himself. It was like, oh, almost lost my oldest son. Uh, it would have cut me in half. There's no doubt about it. Um, so, but there was a there is a destiny. There's something yet to be played out that I'm here for. And a while back, you know, I fell off the roof of the house accidentally, and I could have easily have landed on my head. And that would have been it, but I landed on my feet and broke my broke my foot. It took a year to get back to normal, but it was much better than landing on my head. There's no doubt about that. And so there was again another destiny. I so to I have something to do here. Other people come for a short time, and their destiny is fulfilled. Other people come for a much longer time, and their destiny eventually is fulfilled. But we have to uh, allow ourselves to know that we have a greater purpose, and that purpose is uh, to help others who are suffering and to fulfill our soul in some way and open up our soul. Or perhaps we haven't gained that enlightenment of any kind and we need to go to another life and start over again. And that's also another great purpose. But when we can help others who are suffering, what better thing can there be? Uh, I think that's all important. And we are supposed to raise our level of consciousness, as Dr. Uh, David Hawkins talks about, you know, or the greatest gifts we can give to ourselves and to the rest of the world, as I paraphrase this, is to raise our consciousness. And uh, there's no doubt about it. And that raising of our consciousness comes back to us, so we give it back to the world. And that's absolutely important. Now, how do we raise our consciousness? Well, one of the first ways I can think of is meditation. And through meditation, we actually, first of all, challenge ourselves because, you know, sitting in silence and meditation, that's a challenge. There's no doubt about that. But once you get used to it 
And like anything else, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you get used to it, you can ride for hours on a bicycle, you know, and it's no big deal. And the same thing goes with meditation. And then you get really good on a bicycle and you can pop wheelies, you know, and ride on the front wheel only and all kinds of things. Well, great things happen in meditation also, you know, where we start to stand outside of ourselves and we look in and we can see from our true consciousness standpoint who we are and what's going on. And when we do it for a long, a long enough period of time, we start to see the greater self, that which is that true consciousness. And we start to let go of a lot of the stuff that's keeping us held back in this life. Perhaps we have addictions, perhaps we have uh, fears, perhaps we have all kinds of, in many number of different things that are holding us back and for some reason in this lifetime. And all of a sudden they let go. And it's pretty powerful to have that happen. Uh, and it doesn't happen overnight. I recommend going to a Vipassana meditation retreat. They're given all over the United States and in the world. They're totally free. Even the food and lodging is free. And if you look up 10-day free Vipassana meditation retreat, uh, you'll find it. It's like dharma.org, I think it is. And don't look at it under your mobile. You have to look at it on a computer. It's not very mobile friendly. But look that up. And I put in an hour of meditation myself every morning and an hour every night. And I've been doing this for 30 years now. And I have actually changed and grown because of that meditation. <clears throat> in fact, last night I went to a friend's uh, after the holidays party and uh, I met an old friend, a psychologist, and he took one look at me and he said, Paul, you look very peaceful. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I feel very peaceful. And I told him about doing meditation. He said, oh man, I have a hard time doing 10 minutes. and I'm trying to make it to 20 minutes. He said, it's going to come. It's going to come. And, uh, you know, it's not about really what our brain is doing for the most part. I've seen people go do meditation retreats and have their OCD disappear, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. I've seen people with ADD go do the retreat and have that disappear also, and on and on and yada, yada, yada. Uh, when we finally calm down the mind, Freedom, let's, you know, is there. It's kind of like we have these bars, we're in jail, we have created those bars <laughs> by ourselves, there's no doubt about it, but when we allow ourselves to go into this state of freedom, those bars dissolve. And uh, there's no longer, you know, holding us back in any way, shape or form. And a lot of times we think of those bars as something that's on fire and we're totally fearful of the whole thing. But the thing is, when we finally walk through that, and we walk through those bars which we think are on fire, actually we find that, ah, it's just soothing water. And uh, we, then we are totally set free. And then we allow ourselves to find that great peace. And we find our our maker inside. You know, a lot of times people find, you know, the maker is out there and the maker is in here. I mean, in every spiritual text it talks about the fact that the maker lives in our heart. So when we finally connect with that, boy, we're set free. It's like the rebirth. There's no doubt about it. You know, and it talks about the rebirth of consciousness in every spiritual text. And he said, be still and ye shall know my name. Uh, it talks about that in all the spiritual texts, you know. Christ talked about it, Buddha talked about it, you know. My, uh, Sai Baba talked about it, uh, my mother talks about it, you know. Now, Ramana Maharishi talked about it, and uh, um, Paramahansa Yogananda talked about it. Everybody has talked about it. It is 
allowing ourselves to find that great expanse within. And there is nothing, I'm telling you, nothing that that can't heal. I've seen amazing things happen. But one has to let go of their fears even to get there, you know. And that's really important, you know, people, oh, I'm afraid to touch that. Nothing's going to happen. But we have to allow ourselves to, you know, crawl up there if we even have to. <laughs> Put our name in on the website, say I'm going to go. And hold ourselves to that. And make sure we make that, you know, spot. All we have to do is show up. You know, the food and lodging is free even. And so, and these people know how powerful this is for everyone. And start doing a regular, regular process of meditation every day. You know, I put an hour in every morning, an hour in the evening also. And uh, uh, I have to say at first, when I first started this many years ago, I thought, oh, an hour, that's a long time. But now I find an hour is a very short time. A lot of times my meditation goes to an hour and a half. Uh, but I feel so much more peaceful, content, blissful, joyful, uh, a joy that bubbles up from the inside instead of trying to find things out there, you know. I was just watching a movie called Minimalism, you can probably find that on Netflix, and uh, it was very powerful, these people decide that they no longer want to deal with all the stuff in our lives. You know, we have so much stuff and we have material things that we think that we think we need all this to make us happy, but the reality is it doesn't make us happy. We go buy something and 10 minutes later we're not happy because, you know, that didn't fill us up from the inside out. There's still this void inside there. You know, we go get the next uh, iPhone, we go get the next, you know, Android phone, we go get the next computer, we go get the next, um, whatever it is, you know, the new coffee machine or whatever. <laughs> yeah, we think that makes us happy, but the reality is, you know, look at all these avatars that came, they had nothing, but they had a lot inside, and that's really what we want. And the more we allow ourselves to minimize the stuff in our lives, the more we actually find great joy inside. And so, uh, as one man said, you know, love people and use things, and not the other way around. <laughs> I think that is so true. So anyway, I hope you will understand your destiny I hope you'll understand that you can set yourself free from so many things with meditation and I hope you will minimize the amount of things in your life. I love you. <laughs>